All right, I've got with me the best-selling author of the Left Behind series and uh, all these other things that I could be saying to introduce you in your bio, but, uh, but most importantly, my dad and uh, for most of my life, my best friend, Jerry Jenkins. Dad, welcome. You are now talking to, hopefully, at this moment, uh, tens of thousands of chosen fans uh, who are who tuned in and are eager to hear from you. So thanks for thanks for uh, joining me. Thrilled to be with you, as you can imagine. Yes. So speaking of thrilled, um, I got a front row seat when I was in college. That's when the Left Behind book, the first Left Behind book came out. And similar to The Chosen, it took about a year plus to start to gain traction. And, and then there reached a bit of a tipping point, and then it continued to grow. Who We'll see how The Chosen continues to do, of course. We're still relatively early. But the Left Behind series, how many did the series and kids' books sell, sell total? What were the final, final totals, or at least the totals so far? Yeah, the totals so far are right around 63 and a half million copies. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned it, <clears throat> that's really been a long time ago. The first book came out in August of 1995. So we're talking it would be 27 years this year. And that whole series is still selling around 15,000 units a month. So it just keeps going. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, I'm curious. It's, it's one thing for you to have experienced something like Left Behind and to hope that I, I mean, you've, you never pressured me at all to follow in your footsteps or to be an author or to do anything, really. You just wanted me to, to pursue God's calling. Um, right. On one hand, it's, it's, it's interesting for you and, and thrilling for you to see what's happening with The Chosen. But I'm curious what, how it feels for you from a spiritual perspective um, when people say, oh, my goodness, I didn't know you were th that, that your dad wrote Left Behind. Um, one of the things they sometimes mention is the spiritual connection. I, I believe that, that the similarity between The Chosen and Left Behind is that you and I, for whatever reason, I'm not sure what it is. I don't remember you and I talking about this when, we were, when I was growing up, other than we used to tell stories after Sunday school about what Jesus and the disciples might have been like and made jokes about it and whatnot. But, but the, the notion of taking the Bible— in your case, it was the book of Revelation. In my case, it's the Gospels. And in, however you want to describe it, mo you know, not modernizing it, but making it palatable, making it maybe more digestible in some way for a modern audience in the media space. What has it been like for you and mom uh, to, to, to kind of experience this twice now, 25 years apart, to see, is there something to be gleaned from it that audiences clearly want this more? Is there something you find particularly interesting about seeing it happen again? It, to me, it's just bizarre. I mean, I, I can't imagine the odds of, of lightning striking like this twice in the same family in a, in a quarter century. You know, I, I have always wanted to to imagine what scriptural truth looks like uh, for real people. I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I'm having this experience myself with the chosen, where as I read the Bible now, I'm picturing these these characters, these actors who play these characters. Um, and, and I can see them, and they're, not, they're no longer statues on pedestals or paintings of, of men with big gray beards who march everywhere. It, it just brings it alive to me. And uh, what I was trying to do with Left Behind, what Dr. Lahan and I were trying to do, is to say, let's assume this is true. Let's assume that we can take this literally. If it happened, let's put people, real people, in the way of these events and see how it might turn out. And, and people gave us that literary license like they're giving it to you where they're saying, you know, we realize this isn't exactly what the Bible said happened uh, when you invent a story leading up to, to something that happened in the Bible. You're true to that. But we're just saying this is what it could have looked like. This, this is credible and plausible. And uh, for some reason, that just really makes it come to life for people. And, uh, you know, to me, it could, I couldn't be more thrilled. You know, I've, I've mentioned to you, when I was eight years old, I had rheumatic fever and was in the hospital for three weeks. And I came from a good church going home and my mother and father were devout. And one of the things my mother did, your grandma, she taught me to, to memorize John 3, that whole scene of Jesus meeting Nicodemus by night. And I'm telling you, to see that come to life on the screen and, he, and have you do it, hmm. 
decades later, I mean, can you imagine the, the, the full circle there? That just uh, thrills me no end. And you know I'm a blubberer, so I'll try to, to control myself tonight. But uh, that, that has been a thrill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's right. I don't know if I made that connection because I knew that John 3 was so important to you. But if, I don't know that I made that connection to, that bringing it to life would have been so resonant with you. That's awesome. Um, so speaking of that, you're doing the novels. You, you, book two is now out and uh, it's called Come and See. Um, let's get in, let's give an example. So uh, just real quick, um, if you've got a couple paragraphs that that uh, bring a little bit more context and a little bit more light to what people may have already seen. Yeah, and this is the, this is the book that we can have in your home for just pennies a day. Yeah. And uh, from chapter 50, the, the, the title of the chapter is Desperation. This is just after Jesus has been uh, arrested. Simon can hardly believe Andrew has been right. He expected trouble down the road, but assumed it would more likely come as a result of the massive crowds they expected at the upcoming sermon. To see the man they had virtually given their lives to led away, his hands bound behind his back, is more than he can bear, more than I can bear too, apparently. He and Andrew raced toward the camp. Big James and John had been among those who appeared to stand passively as the arrest was executed. Simon has never been able to keep up with his little brother, and as he follows, he determines what to say to the others. Of one thing he is sure, he will never abandon Jesus in such a situation. Does no one else have an iota of backbone? I think people also get an idea of where I get my emotion from. Uh, uh, it's, it's hard for you to talk much ever about me or the Gospels or your Savior uh, without getting emotional. And uh, it's probably why about once every every one or two live streams, I'm I'm uh, the same way. And uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, the, the poet Robert Frost is the one who said, no tears in the writer, no tears in the reader. Well, there's tears in this writer, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, um, there's more to come. There's going to be a book each season uh, based on, on, on each season of the show. Uh, you already have the scripts for season three. And uh, so those that book will be worked on very soon. And uh, again, um, one of my heroes, um, probably my number one hero and uh, one of my best friends and someone who I uh, have always been proud to say I'm the son of the left behind guy. It's never been it's never been a distraction or a burden. It's always been a joy and a and an honor. So uh, I'm so glad we, we get to work together actually on this and uh, hopefully continue to have uh, an opportunity to impact people. So thanks again for coming. Thanks for having me on. Couldn't get, couldn't get better than this. Yeah, I love you. Love you.